Hey, what's up everybody? Tutal Toby here, and today we are at the end of our journey of trying to create tutorials for all of the tier two challenges found at tutaltoby.com. So if we go here to access full library, we can see that we've got a library of over 250 CAD challenges where you can try to take a 2D drawing and turn it into a 3D model. And this library can be a little bit daunting, but fortunately you can filter based on the type of challenge that you want to do and also based on the challenge difficulty level. Now we've already completed tutorials for all the tier one challenges. And so recently we've been going through and doing uh, tutorials for all the tier two challenges. And we can see here that at the bottom of this list, there's just one final challenge remaining. We've done tutorials for all the rest of these. So let's give this guy a try. This was actually a special challenge that we released at a recent trade show called PDX, an amazing trade show that we attended this year. And so here we can see that there have been 77 people that have solved this one. The average solve time is five minutes and 34 seconds. Last time I did this, I did it in 17 minutes and 26 seconds. So let's see if we can get that a little bit closer to the average solve time. And so we're gonna say try again and go. So the question here is what is the mass of this part in XX grams? And the tolerance is plus or minus three grams. We're gonna try to answer down here. The model is made from ABS. And it looks like for this model, this is kind of a special model. Like I said, we showed this at PDX. You can just use your library's default ABS. Okay, so no special density on this one. This model is 3D printable. It is a phone stand, so you can 3D print it out and you can actually rest your phone upon this stand. And we can see here that probably the most tricky thing about this model is figuring out the location of the origin. Should it be here? Should it be here? Should it be down here? You know, it's definitely gonna be along this center line because the model has symmetry. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it down here at the bottom. So as far as origin location, I think I'm gonna put the origin here. That would also be here on this view or kind of down here here at the middle of the part at the bottom down here in this view and then as far as my first sketch goes I'm going to try to create this half of the triangle and then I'm going to mirror that across to give me the other half of the triangle and that's going to be my first sketch and what I'm going to do with that sketch is I'm going to be adding in these fillets right in the sketch and the reason that's important is because this dimension here this 50 dimension it goes up to that point of tangency so I can't really add that fillet after the fact I have to add it in this sketch that's kind of the tricky thing about this this model I've seen a lot of users go in and try to create it with a sharp point here and then define the 50 to that sharp point that's not going to work it has to be defined here to the top of that radius so after we get that first sketch in place I'm going to extrude that up to this five millimeter height. And then once I've got that in place, all I need to do is just create these other two shapes, this kind of rounded triangle up top here, and then this slotted shape down here. Those should come together pretty easily because I'll already kind of have the foundation for those shapes. Now that's the plan. Let's see if that plan actually works out. And I know it took about a minute and a half here, or almost two minutes to kind of, kind of come up with this plan, but I think it's always good to come up with a game plan before you jump into your 3D CAD. And if you agree, be sure to hit the like button on this video. So here we go, we're gonna click open in a new window that way we can take the the drawing and we can move the drawing over to our second monitor and then we're going to go to uh our our on shape environment here let me move this over so we can keep an eye on the clock keep an eye on the average time and let's choose to create this new document create document i am going to create this in the public space so if you ever get stuck on this model or really on any of the models you can always search the public space for the the model name 25-10-11 triangle phone stand so you can always search for that uh, text string and maybe you can find the model and, and take a look at it it is in the public space in on sheep and so here I'm going to start on the top plane actually let me just make sure my units are correct workspace units I always work in millimeters and grams so yeah we're good there so top plane s key begin a sketch n key to get normal two and then I'm going to create kind of just a foundation for the sketch I'm going to come over here like so maybe I'll uh, come up like so and then I'm going to come back and touch the end point and then I'm going to come around here with an arc like so it's not going to be perfect yet but it gets us kind of close and then I'm going to finish off here just by coming down below here and I'm going to press the letter Q and that lets me come down below here and kind of drop in that center line so I can mirror everything. So now I'm going to hit escape. I'm going to take this point and this line here, and I'm going to press I. That makes those two coincident. And once I've got that geometry there coincident, now what I can do is I can take that whole thing, put a window around everything, and then I can choose to mirror 
So here on the sketching toolbar, we've got mirror. Here's mirror. We can mirror that whole thing, mirror that whole thing right across. So now we're in good shape. Now we got that whole thing nice and mirrored. We can exit out of the mirror command here. We can get into the fillet command here in our sketch mode. So again, if you expand, you know, I have to expand this menu a little because I have it a little like squished up so I can see the clock, but I could choose the fillet command here. And then for the fillet, I could choose this corner and I could choose this corner down here. And it looks like that's going to have a fillet of three millimeters. So I'll left click in the background and then on shape asks me, what do you want that radius to be? I want that radius to be three millimeters. Enter. Okay. Whoop. Looks like the top got a little squishy there. Let's add an, let's add a dimension S key dimension and we'll dimension this arc here. That arc is going to have a radius of 10. All right. Gets us in better shape there. And it looks like the angle between these lines here is going to be an angle of 50. Okay, just kind of going through and massaging this thing. Looks like the distance here from the base to this uh, arc here, to the, if you just click the arc, on shape will make it to the tangency point. Looks like that's going to be 50 as well. And whoa, look at that. Now that sketch is nice and fully defined. That, that kind of came together quickly there at the end. And that's how sketching is, you know, especially when you have tangent arcs. A lot of times you just have to kind of little by little work your way through the sketch, kind of massage the sketch, move, drag things around, move things around. And eventually you'll get that sketch to be nice and fully defined, fully constrained. That's what we're always trying to accomplish in a parametric category modeler like on shape so now that we've got that sketch nice and fully defined fully constrained now what we can do is we can choose to extrude that just like in our game plan so s key extrude and this is going to get extruded up here we're going to say we're going to bring that up to a height of five millimeters enter enter Oh yeah, that looks good. And then we can go back to that uh, underside surface or the top plane, either one. We could go back here, pick this surface, S key, begin a sketch, N key to get normal two. Um, you could also do like a shift five if you wanted to jump into a top view. That'll work as well. And I think what we're going to do here is we're just going to take this line here, this curve here. I mean, there's a couple ways we could do this. Probably, honestly, what I would probably do is I would probably just begin a circle and then drop in a circle right here and just bring it right to this point. Drop in a circle right here. So I'm, I'm just kind of going right to the center point of that arc and then dropping in a circle. It's just a nice, easy way to get a, a fully defined circle co-radial to that arc. There's other ways we could do it with like a partial arc. But if you do it this way, then all you need to do is just drop in a line here, horizontal. Drop in a line there horizontal and then just make a tangent to one of those. So if I hit escape and then I pick that line and I pick that arc, I can press T and that makes it tangent. And then I can click on this bottom edge here and do a use, which is like a, a trace or a copy, a convert, a use. Okay, and that converts that bottom line. And that should be enough for me to take that shape and extrude that up as that uh, kind of slotted shape that's running across the front of this phone stand, this slotted shape here that's running across the front of the phone stand. So just, you know, some different techniques. I'm just trying to show you some different techniques that I've used uh, to help me in these kinds of, of uh, modeling challenges. And then for this top shape, we could take this curve, this curve, and this curve, or the, the curve in the two lines. And again, we could do a use, and then we could construct a horizontal line that, that runs across here. Don't get midpoint. Just, just pick a somewhere other than the midpoint. Make a horizontal line that runs across here. And then we could use a, a trim command here in on shape. So trim is these scissors. And we could trim this line, trim this line. So that way, you know, this upper line just stops right here. This upper line stops right here. And now again, we could jump into the fillet command. So fillet, this point, and this point. And then we could click in the background and we could say that's going to have a fillet of six. Enter. Oh, this thing's coming together. Now there's still one final uh, dimension that's loose here, and that's why this is still blue. So we could S key dimension, and then we could say we want to make a dimension that goes from here. Oh, nope, did that wrong. S key dimension, we want to create a dimension that goes from here to here. Got to make sure we get these dimensions correct or else the mass is going to be incorrect. And that's going to be 14. And that's the number, that 14 number, that's the number that you would want to change if this phone stand doesn't work for your phone. If your phone's too wide or if your phone's too narrow, you could just adjust that number and that will let you create this phone stand in a way that it will be, it will be customized for you and it'll actually work well for you when you go to 3D print it. So now that we've got all that geometry in place on that sketch, we can choose S key extrude. 
and we see that on shape is smart enough that it just goes around and picks up on all those contours look at that we didn't have to trim we didn't have to pick anything special there on shape just just knows it just knows what we want so the only thing we have to do here is just flip the direction so we're going in the opposite direction this is coming up from the bottom of the part because i sketched it here on the back side of the part and the reason i did that is because the dimension given to us on the drawing is this dimension here from the bottom of the part so I sketched it on the bottom so that we could use this dimension to extrude it. So now that we've got that extrude coming up, we can make that go to a height of 15 millimeters. Enter, enter. And I think that's going to do it for that one. Let's see here. Shift 7, get to isometric. P to hide our planes. And uh, then what we can do is we can right mouse button down here on the name of the part, say edit appearance. We can change this to kind of match the color that the customer gave us. Customers always like it when you do this, when you match their colors. And now for the material, this is kind of a special model here. I'm going to say assign material. I'm just going to use the default material from Onshape. I'm just going to search here for ABS. And if I was using a different CAD system like Fusion or SolidWorks, I would just use the default ABS in that CAD system as well. So I'm just going to search for the default ABS here. Here. We're going to assign that material and we're going to click down here on the, the set of scales, click down here on the set of scales, and we're going to say we want to measure this part here. And what is the mass? 20.7 grams. So let's go over here into the app and see if we got it right. So 20.7 and enter. And oh, yeah, we did it. Very nice. Very nice. And so we can see here that we got the answer correct. We're going to earn a point on the leaderboard. Or actually, this time, what we're going to do is we're just going to improve our previous time. So our previous time down here was uh, 17 minutes and 26 seconds. And now our new time here nine minutes and 49 seconds let's go that's why i like that try again function in the too tall table the app so we're going to say submit and there we go we improved our time we're not quite down to the average time yet i think i still might want to do a try again just to see if i can get this time down a little bit faster i always try to beat the average time here in the app but for now i'm happy with that run i'm happy we were able to get that tutorial done and guys if you like these kinds of challenges going from 2d to 3d and you want to get some more cad practice in be sure to visit us at twotalltoby.com you can practice these models and you can continue to refine your cad workflows and if you enjoyed this video, let me know down below in the comments what you learned from this tutorial. Be sure to hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe. And we're all done with the tier two challenges. Now, of course, over time, we'll add some more tier two challenges to the library. But I think we're ready to move on and start making some tier three tutorials. So I will look forward to seeing all of you in the next Too Tall Toby step-by-step -step tutorial.